Somehow I feel like as you, if you continue to go on as a creative person, like you have to like find some commercial intersection, you know, which I feel like is definitely different for everybody. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth. Today I'm sitting down with Nathan Finley, an artist here based in Savannah, Georgia, and my neighbor at the stables. So I, I stopped you mid-sentence. <laughs> you said you moved here from Atlanta in like the mid-90s, right? Uh, yep. Uh, the summer of 1994 from Atlanta, Georgia. Um... Which seems like a long time ago now, but, um, yeah, my dad, I mean, most of my childhood, are we doing like the full, we're doing like the full story. Well, I mean, uh, uh, we just can, like, we can do, I'm down with the full story. Yeah. What's your, like, uh, so what was your childhood like? And then basically like how young did you start getting into like your craft basically? Um, well, I mean. I mean, my childhood was spent in Atlanta. Um, I mean, I guess, you know, as far as, like, medium these days, I would consider myself, like... The stuff I've been doing most recently um, is a lot of, I guess it would be mixed media, which I don't know if that's kind of like a catch-all for someone who just can't... Oh. We'll return that. Um, a lot of uh, it's kind of the, the stuff I've been working on the most. I mean, the last year, a lot of clothing. Um, that's kind of like been my bread and butter, so to say. Um, you know, through this pandemic and mainly uh, kind of designing and making clothing and then you know just kind of throwing that on social media and and basically just like working from home and and here and uh selling that so that's um that's kind of been a lot of the past year kind of like kind of like wacky like bootleg t-shirts and sweatshirts um some of it's been uh you know, original, like, I got into making, um, these kind of, like, collage you know, cut paper mixed with, uh, I'm, I'm just, uh, into all different sorts of media, you know, spray paint, um, I kind of, uh, I got a printmaking degree, and like that's what I went to school for is drawing and printmaking and um uh you know as soon as I got done with that I found myself immediately I fell in love with like graffiti you know and street art stuff um I feel like there was like I don't know if it's this way for everybody but I felt like there was kind of like an immediate disconnect from like going from an you know institutional setting into like the real world you know or whatever and so as far as like how teachers will assign you projects and then once you're out in the real world it's just like okay you're on your own <laughs> yeah and I mean or the uh just how I feel like I went to Guilford College which was is in Greensboro North Carolina and um I graduated in 2004 and um, I got a BFA uh, I don't know either I, I mean I feel like I was working hard but I don't think really any of like the business or marketing I don't know if it seemed like it was mainly like technique driven curriculum I don't know if that's the right word but um because what I did in, in college was a lot of uh well, definitely um, drawing and printmaking classes, but 
you know, two D design, three D design, uh, a lot of art history, and you know, some sculpture classes, uh, and then a lot of other liberal arts. It was a pretty pretty diverse undergrad education. You know, we we did a lot of um, a lot of writing and a lot of reading. I feel like at some points. I really love the liberal arts setting, but um, I just have these memories of at least one time, you know, I think it was in my first year or two, and I was in this class called African Women Writers, which was with this really well-known um, professor at the school, and the uh, kind of as like, you know, part of the course assignments think we had to read like 11 novels for this one class so it kind of it was all impactful you know but it, it kind of felt like I don't know you know I don't know how it is for people who go to a you know like kind of like a straight up art school you know for undergrad or or afterwards but um you know it was kind of like I feel like I was drawn in a lot of different directions, you know. It was kind of like, well, the creative stuff's really like my, um, what I feel like I want to focus on, but like reading all these books for all these other classes, and um, so I don't know. Maybe maybe undergrad experience is just, I think it's just a crazy time in your life, or it was for me, you know. You're it's like this crazy time socially and. You know, trying to figure out who you are and like what you're into, and um, do you, is all your is do you consider yourself like specifically working in physical mediums, or is there what what amount of like digital goes into creating your work? Um, well, I didn't have any. I don't think. I mean, I wouldn't. It's crop. It's probably like an easy cop out, but it's like I don't really consider myself very like tech savvy. You know, like I had an iPhone three until like two years ago, <laughs> so you know, and it was only until like I got my like you know newish or phone that I got on like Instagram and trying to you know start putting some stuff out on you know, you know, kind of get into that that side of things. And I mean, I've been using the computer a little bit more this past year with some of this clothing stuff because. Um, at least for now, I've, I'll take like whatever image I want and I'll either like find that on the computer and then I'll like print out a copy of that and I'll like kind of like tear it up or rearrange it and then put it back into the photocopier and print out basically like with the clothing stuff, it's been kind of this, um, I feel like it's it's basically like these iron-on transfer vinyl sheets for the clothing and um, I feel like it's something that's really was really intended I don't know if we've had this conversation before but something that was intended for like a you know like an elementary school age birthday party and it's like alright we're gonna make like a bunch of shirts for the kids and <laughs> we're not really expecting them to last and so we'll just you know it's so I've, that's that's the material, and so I'll just print out this stuff, iron it onto the shirts, but then I like sew it in by hand, trying to give it a little more, uh, hopefully, longevity. And um, so it's kind of kind of lends this like patchwork quality to it too. But um, you know, it's not. I don't know. At least right now, I don't know how to like screen print. I feel like that might be some of my next steps. You know, just to be able to produce things faster and things that'll just last longer on their own without it's kind of like these I haven't really found the the happy medium between like time invested it, it's this is it's definitely been like a huge learning curve over like um, the past year with um, you know making stuff selling stuff shipping stuff you know kind of trying to find an intersection between like what I enjoy making and what people want to buy, you know, and just like 
because some of the first shirts that I made, I was just kind of like, kind of like making whatever I want. And I still do that to a degree, but at least with the sewing aspect of the clothing, you know, it's, it's so labor intensive. I mean, it's not like I'm making like a bronze sculpture, but it's labor intensive enough that to put, you know, X amount of, you know, 10 hours into something, into like a shirt that I look, you know, that looks pretty cool. And then somebody see it online and be like, oh man, that's like sweet. Do you, uh, what, you know, do you have that in a medium though? And then it's like, I mean, we can, we can make that happen, you know, but it's, so kind of trying to like, it's been this slow snowball effect, you know, and I, we're definitely still in the middle of it. Um, do you consider yourself to be, to be abstract, like an abstract artist? Mm. I feel like I'm still kind of figuring it out. I feel like abstract art, um, I guess I have mixed feelings on abstract art. Um, well, cause I, trying cause to I, be diplomatic about this. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, because we know, we know a lot of know really lot. good abstract artists, right? <laughs> yeah. But So what I notice about your work in particular is that you feature people a lot. The uh, the past year, I mean, I feel like um, I feel like I have done some kind of like painterly, abstractish stuff, and it's never kind of personally satisfied satisfied me totally. So I think that's where, even if it came from like magazine clippings or like stuff I'm printing out off the computer and like folding that into the uh, you know into the piece or whatever it's been a little I feel like it's been a little more like you know I've been more satisfied with that um, so when you're thumbing through a magazine what catches your eye um I feel like some of the stuff, I mean, it's been like this very layered, like, it's almost like I made this, uh, I think it had Miley Cyrus in it. It was probably like a little over, like about a year and a half ago, but you probably couldn't even t really tell. I don't, I don't really know like a ton about Miley Cyrus, but sorry, Miley. Um, but I mean, you can tell that it's a person. I feel like I, I've kind of been going for this like disorientation. Like you can tell that it's, you know, it's like mag, you know, figurative imagery like covered in paint, and you can like see that it's a person or it's something, you know. But it's kind of like not kind of quite clear what is going on. Um, but I feel like the, that kind of moved into this next area where. I made this painting for my brother. Uh, we were like really big into collecting baseball cards when we were younger. And uh, he was like, can you make me you know, like a, uh, something with like baseball cards? And I was like, yeah. And so he like listed off this kind of like dream team-ish, you know, list. And so I, you know, that's, the internet's so crazy, you know, you can find, I found like all of these old cards like that I could remember from my childhood, you know, and found like different sizes of them and like printed them out, spray painted them with like different colors, kind of like, and then like filled this canvas onto it, you know, with all these pictures. And um, I feel like that's when some of the, I feel like ever since then, it's been like this kind of like nostalgia trip of things that I remember either from like my childhood or like, you know, like I feel like it's kind of taken on like this pop culture, uh, thing and just things that I think are kind of like wacky or have, you know, like old movie posters like Terminator and like stuff like that or kind of like classic movies and you know, different bands, and, um... So you said you're not, like, super familiar with Miley. Do you typically select people that you are familiar with? Um... 
That the thing with Miley, I don't even know. Somehow I had a L magazine, and I was like, all right, I'll just use something from this, and I just uh, I had like this uh, some sort of painting. I think I just had this thing that I was already kind of working on. It was like this found, it was like a framed canvas. And I just, you know, I took this magazine and I put it in the photocopier and I just made like a bunch of cop, you know, black and white copies of it. And then like printed those out and then like kind of like tore those up. And, uh, cause that's one, I feel like that's one like carryover from my like printmaking days is that, um, you know, I, I have this kind of ritualistic, uh, like I love like a tear, like a torn edge on like a piece of paper. I feel like that's kind of like the part of the aesthetic that came from the printmaking days, you know, and tearing so much paper because back in the day, um, I mean like when I was in school, it was primarily like lino cut, wood block printing, um, intaglio etching and uh, so we were you know preparing all the paper and um, and doing you know additioning the work but uh, you know, small additions you know and it was just for like class t classes you know but you know kind of handling all that paper and um, you know I just feel like it gives it a, a little extra kind of like human touch but uh because each tear is a little different. Yeah, or even just like if, if I'm using like a ruler and I'll take like, you know, like something straight out of the photocopier and I'll like put like, I have this favorite ruler that I have and just to like put it onto the edge and like, you know, and then I'll, I'll take it off. Even if it's just basically like the same, even if it doesn't really look that different, you know, just having that little torn edge, I feel like it's just not as... Um, somehow just gives it like a tiny little different feel. So I'll, I'll usually start, you know, I'll just tear up all the paper and, and then, I mean, I can like rip out, you know, giving it like a more jagged edge or whatever, but, um, so I, I just, you know, started gluing all these <laughs> Miley Cyruses all over this canvas and then I covered it in like some white paint and then I uh, put it on Instagram and, you know, with a, with a cleverish title, I thought, and somebody was like, "Oh my God, uh, like, can I buy that?" And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> we can." It's all for sale. I'll meet you. Uh, I'll meet you in a parking lot somewhere. <laughs> well, I mean, that's 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 not that's not far from the truth, really. So the wood blocks that you're covering in glue and then ripping up paper and putting glue on top of that. Um, do you go into that knowing that that's what you're trying to do? Or like, are you starting just like, I'm just gonna put a little bit of this here and a little bit of that there, and then it kind of just works out that way? Um, I feel like one thing that's happened in the past year that I'd see kind of like with the current, I don't know if you'd say current body of work, but that's like really, <laughs> really blowing it up. But um, so like when the pandemic hit, because I've been like at the stables, I guess, since December of 2019, and that's when I moved in up there. And uh, so I was only here a few months, really, before everything kind of like, you know, it seemed like everything kind of got weird real fast. And um, I, I, I'm kind of like a pack rat. Like I have a lot of stuff. You know, it's all stuff I love, but it's like. You know, it's like somewhere I even have like my original like garbage pail kids, like from when I was like, you know, in like kindergarten, literally. So it's like, so that's, that's kind of happened with the artwork too. And I, I have a hard time throwing materials away. And I feel like it's been this, even as, you know, as like recently as like last night, I was like cutting up like these, you know, drawings, like, you know, I guess you would call them like works on paper that I probably made some of them, you know, six, eight from six, eight years ago and like cutting those up and putting that into like something that I was making like, you know, yesterday. And, um, but I think one thing that 
happened in like the last year was that um It was kind of like, you know, art supply stores kind of shut down. I mean, I feel like I'm fairly like a like an in-person, per, you know, kind of like person. And so I would I would buy a lot of stuff from local stores, but, you know, and, and have since, you know, been doing a lot of, buying a lot of supplies like offline. Um, but it was kind of like, you know, I had this little moment where, you know, like maybe like April of last year, you know, and it was like some of the retailers that I would normally get like spray paint, um, or whatever from, you know, it's kind of like, we're, we're closed (laughs) until further notice, you know, and it was kind of like, oh, what, uh, I mean, I had a pretty good stash, uh, but I feel like I started like this whole incorporation of like found objects and, you know, making stuff on found materials that that really started, you know, a little about a, about a year ago when kind of, because I have a, I don't know if they're probably like 10 or 15. I just started making stuff on, you know, paper grocery bags because we were getting like a grocery delivery for a while from Instacart. And so I was just at home like all the time and uh, just started, you know, ripping stuff up and making um, you know, making stuff on all these different materials. And now that, you know, we're kind of like, you know, I, I think the last year's just been obviously, you know, different for everyone. You know, some people's lives changed completely. Some people's lives didn't change that much. Some people never slowed down. Some people, you know, lost their job and, you know, went to something else. Some people are still unemployed. You know, it's just like this variety of experiences Um, but I just found myself, you know, immediately at home. And so I just started collecting more stuff, more stuff than I already have and, and making stuff on like, I feel like that's when this whole like found material, I'm not sure if I'm even like answering your question. Um, but I, I don't always have a plan. Uh, I feel like a, a lot of the things will kind of. Um, you know, I'll work on something and I'll set it aside for a little bit and kind of just, uh, you know, go back to it later or, um, I mean, I have most, probably most of my artwork from the past 20 years I have upstairs here. So it's a, I can definitely see like different, you know, when I was, when I would either be influenced by a certain like teacher or like a certain artist, you know, after, uh, you know, after kind of getting out of like that school setting and, you know, just finding your own inspiration. And so I don't always have a plan, but, um, you know, I feel like it's like this, you know, just ongoing, uh, if I'm, you know, if I'm not, if I don't like something, I can always just like, you know, spackle something else over it or change it or just put it on the shelf. How do you know when something's done? Um, good question, right? Uh, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm still figuring that out. Well, you know, if somebody, you know, I I hate to sound so money hungry, but if somebody wants to buy something, then it's definitely probably done. (laughs) That's as done as it's <laughs> you know, get. it's like I can ship that to Atlanta um, or where, you know, wherever. It's I feel like you know, art is it's it's all of it is like such eye of the beholder, you know, and a very like weird thing. Um, you know, it's kind of like disproportionate. I feel like who like makes it. I feel like it's kind of like wacky and kind of like you, I don't know. It's uh. I feel like when I get obsessive, I feel like it takes kind of like an obsessive side uh, to throw yourself. I, I feel like whenever I, I kind of have to take the energy when it comes to me and I'll, I'll find myself working, you know, sometimes obsessively for a couple of days, you know, and then I'll just like, then I can't do anything. And it's, I guess finding balance is is a big thing in life in general, but you know, 
with a studio or you know the regular studio practice and um do you um do you work you're you're here late like i am quite a bit um do you work do you find yourself being more creative during certain hours or do you have like a set schedule like a loosely set set schedule like um, five days a week or well uh I mean, at least for now, you know, we've talked we've talked about a couple of my local job searches recently. But I mean, right now I'm still doing like this kind of like you know quote full time, and um, I feel like one pattern you know has been that I'll try to like work on the clothing stuff in the morning, and you know, so I'll get up fairly early and. Uh, you know, that's one thing. It's like all the clothing stuff is out at the house and then all the messier stuff is down here. And so usually, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do the, I'll try to work on the clothing stuff in the morning or I'll make some stickers or like, you know, just kind of, uh, th usually those are the two things I do the most, you know, it's like, well, I'll, uh, I'll kind of just go ahead and jump into trying to sew on something, you know. I've over the past six months with this whole sewing and clothing thing. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm like at the end of the road with that, but I've like it's been. I don't know. I've kind of like burned myself out in a way on it. It's uh, it's just very repetitive. I mean, I feel like it's been like the perfect kind of counterpoint is the right word, but to some of the messier kind of like no plan you know really like a loose plan um like with the more painterly you know uh stuff that's upstairs here and it's the clothing is just very the sewing is very repetitive and and it has to be functional when it's done it has to kind of have to be like clean you know and it's you know make sure <laughs> make sure that i'm like not you know, spilling anything on it or because ultimately, you know, it's hopefully going to someone to wear and um, so that it, it's a, uh, I feel like it's a much um, what's the right word? It's just kind of like a tighter. It's like when I, when I print these things out, I have to, you know, it's like I have this whole process where I, you know, I basically put like this um, so say I'm like making like a hoodie and I'm like at least OCD enough that I want it to just like printing the thing out, you know, making sure that it's pretty like that it sits on the garment like square and like is like pretty balanced looking, you know, like orientation wise. And then because basically like once you iron the thing on, you know, like it's on. And then sometimes, I mean, I've either people, you know, one cool thing is that people have been a handful of times have been sending me clothing that either they have or that they've ordered and they'll send like directly to me and then they'll have me put something onto it so it's you know it's it's not like it's not like super uh consequences you know but it's like all right this is like kind of like got like one take to like make this right you know because like once it's on like it's like oh <laughs> shit you know like uh i messed up your shirt amanda you know and so it's a little less forgiving and um so that's been that's been good i feel like it's kind of tightened i feel like that was one thing that definitely came from the printmaking days that i almost forgot about you know it was I feel like printmaking um, can give you a, a great, uh, like a great discipline with, I, I feel like there's a couple experiences, you know, where, you know, it's like you put so much, like with, with a lot of the printmaking, I feel like with printmaking, you either put the work into like your screen or your block or your plate, or you put it into you know you either put the the work in up front or or with the printing itself and there was there was you know a handful of times especially with like intaglio etching where you basically you know take a plate and you you know with a different 
uh, you know, different solvents and uh, you know grounds, and you put you know put the stuff onto the plate, and then you add, you draw into the plate, and then you soak it in like an acid bath, and that you know um, you know, and you prepare your plate, and then you ink it, and then I just feel like there was so much. Sometimes there was so much involved with the pre preparation of the paper, the the plates, the whole thing, and then if you weren't like kind of like careful down to like the last, you know, especially if you're doing like multiple colors, like if you weren't, you know, this is like washing your hands in between like every every color change, and um, you know, it's like if you weren't. It's like you had to like stay focused like right up until the very end and through the whole process because it's like if you had done all this work sometimes sometimes for individual prints you know maybe like taking like an hour for one image you know and then it's like you didn't like wash your hands like that last time and get like that ink off of like you know your pinky or whatever and then you pull that last print having put like that you know x amount of time into it and you get like that little smudge on the corner and you're just like oh my god like so I, I don't know if I'm probably the kind of person that would have would have kept it anyway you know but it's like oh man well we can't you know technically include that maybe in like the edition or whatever and I feel like printmaking was just I mean I haven't even thought about like this memory in like years you know but it just I feel like it was a very good for you know with the registration of especially on a printing press um it was very uh very good like kind of like art discipline and well it's interesting that your art has gone kind of leaned into that kind of chaos disorientation you said and so now if you're if you're like a little bit crooked or if there's a mistake it's almost like you can just roll with it now mm -hmm. i feel like i've definitely embraced that uh, a little you know it's i feel like over the past year you know, the clothing has been more, you know, people will have, you know, kind of a specific idea and say, well, can you make me like a Dolly Parton tie-dye crew neck sweatshirt? And I'll be like, yeah. And uh, with the other artwork, I feel like it's kind of me doing like whatever I want. I feel like I'm still like definitely in the beginning phases of all this. Hmm. So. Where do you see it going? I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's a hustle. I, I see how a lot of people, you know, do other stuff. Um, I feel like it's been really, um, really great to be here, you know, because you kind of see other people. I feel like for most, you know, I feel like people are in a variety of in of situations but um i don't like i don't i don't know where i'm at with all of it you know i'm not really compelled to go back to get an mfa um i think if i were to go back to school it might be in something different than art um do you see yourself as always doing art no matter what you end up doing i think i'll always be doing something um even if it was just like making stickers or I want to say something, you know, like that, but, um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a hustle. I mean, really just like probably anyone else that's self-employed or an entrepreneur, you know, you're, you're providing a service and I don't know. I was, I, I came across all these Andy Warhol quotes the other day, you know, and it was, I don't know that much about him, but um, one of the quotes was, "Art, art is what you can get away with," <laughs> you know. And I, he, he seemed, from what little I know, seems like a fascinating character, you know. Just the art of making money, and uh, because that is, you know, that's an art too. And I mean, I feel like there was somewhere along the way, I feel like he he silk screened uh, 100, 100 $1 bills onto a canvas and it sold for like $100,000. And I'm not sure if I'm remembering that correctly or if that was even the right amount, but I feel like the art world, there's, you know, I haven't done it in a while, but it's like you, 
you know, everything's on YouTube and you, if you look at, you know, like a Sotheby's or a Christie's auction, you know, like what some of these, whoops, some of these, you know, it's like, it's just so ridiculous, you know? Like, well, what, what do you think it means to be like successful as an artist? Because um, like some people want that. They want, they need to sell their work for a million dollars or whatever. I don't know. I mean, if you're, if I mean, one probably. I think if you're, if you're paying all your bills directly through your creative work, um, you know that's one one form of success. But I feel like, I don't know. I feel like it's such a. It's not. I, I've had so many other strange jobs in my life, um, and I don't. I don't know if I don't know what I want to do next. I just feel like for you to for whatever creative you know output whether that's you know with fit what kind of like with physical stuff um it's just you know to to create all of the income that you need for you know rent or a mortgage payment for health insurance or life insurance for food for taking care of a vehicle for you know saving <laughs> saving some you know for just to you know at least for myself i feel like it's been um you know it's probably for any i don't know how it works with uh, with other people that are self-employed you know it's um it's like a full-time job uh i feel like there's been it's hard to like have no boundaries with that you know and just feel like you have to always be working which doesn't really seem natural either you know so it's i don't know i mean i'm i'm kind of like looking for some other jobs right now i feel like part of me is the kind of person that like needs structure you know and so to like work for someone else whether you know, I mean, it's, I don't know if this is too rigid of a way of looking at it, you know, but it's kind of like, it seems like part of the, you know, American experience or whatever is like, you know, work experience is like, I don't want to say it's this black and white, you know, but like, you either are self-employed and, you know, and you're, you're responsible and you're taking care of everything or like you, or, you know, you somehow work you know, under the umbrella of some other institution or group or something that's going to provide you with benefits, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of, the, you know, a lot of the stuff that wasn't, wasn't gone over in the etching class, <laughs> classes, you know, it's, uh, maybe that's just part about getting older too, you know, but, uh, it's a trip. Um, well, that's part of what well, I started this podcast is because people graduate with their art degree and they know the medium, they know everything about, making videos or painting or whatever but they don't have how to sell how to invoice how to file taxes health yeah. insurance all that stuff all of it so it's like your your art is a full-time job but then the business of your art is also a full-time job <laughs> if not more important you know yeah. it's uh and it's tough to you know i feel like maybe that's something that all the balance that's found with that is probably different for every artist you know and i don't know i mean just growing an audience the whole thing you know it's um yeah running your social media accounts and all that yeah and just yeah. time management you know um i don't know some of the i mean i i like stopped looking at my usage on instagram because i don't even want to know <laughs> like how much it is you know i mean it's not like 10 hours a day but it's like um, I mean, I, I love Instagram. Uh, you know, I don't know if love is the right word, but I, I think it's a great resource. I, I follow a lot of other artists on there, and I feel like it's great for inspiration. Um, you know, so you can kind of see other people in their studio, or I feel like a lot of the artists that I like look up to are people who basically have gone from either like a graffiti or street, you know background and then have gone into showing in either galleries or creating clothing companies or 
doing design work for companies or you know go you know having like that background in like you know street the street influence but then you know I don't want to call it selling out because you got to make money somehow you know but somehow somehow I feel like as you, if you continue to go on as a creative person like you have to like find some commercial intersection you know which I feel like is definitely different for everybody you know but it's I mean like I waited the tables for a long time you know and it was like and I, I got a whole you know totally absorbed in that world which it was just you know easy to do but so um any of these artists you want that you can think of off the top of your head that you want to shout out um i mean just like in savannah or people i like or people that you like people that you follow or look up to that you mentioned um well one thing i mean so i mean it's 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 come a long way but uh juxtapose magazine uh which i think is probably still printed out of you know I don't know if their headquarters are in like San Francisco, but that was like I graduated from college in 2004, and the art that I you know or the stuff that I gravitated toward immediately was just um, seeing you know like tags and bathrooms and this probably bespeaks of where, where I was spending a lot of my time, but um. I feel like the, the the strange thing about graffiti, you know, it's like this strange paradox of attention seeking, like fame and like anonymity at the same time. And anonymity at the same time, you know, and like because underneath it all, like getting away with it is like kind of like uh, you know necessary. And so I always just thought that was so weird and strange and like immediately fell in love with that just the links that people would go to um especially you see people like i don't know like it was you know like the like the the risk involved and like people going out into like you know train yards and like sometimes like repelling from you know down off of bridges and off of down of buildings you know and just like like literally like risking their life for it, you know? And it was just like, oh my God, like that's so, uh, you know, the, the lack of safety. <laughs> and uh, how, how did the uh, Stables tie-dye shirt come to be? With like, um, a, what's this, this is the Stables and there's this. Oh, and it like has a, like a bleached out. Yeah. Um, I think Sarah, I don't know if this was like last summer or fall. It's been such a weird time trip because we kind of lost a year. A yeah. yeah. And, like, the first time I started messing around with some clothing was probably, like, about 2005, 2006. And then I kind of, like, stopped that and was always just doing vandalistic stuff or, like, little, like, at-home projects, which were never shown. I mean, all the stuff that I have upstairs has pretty much never been shown anywhere. Um, and, I mean... Uh, you know, and it's, I'm not even sure that all of it would be worthy of being shown, you know, but there's just so much stuff up there, and, um, and there's more stuff out at the house, um, but with the stable shirt, I think, I think I'd started to make some of, like, these bleached out shirts, and then some, somehow Sarah and I were talking, and, um, I was like, well, why don't you do a couple stables shirts, and we can, you know, put them out, and I was like, yeah, let's do... I think they were really successful. I, th I feel like, I don't know if this brings it back to kind of like that area where we were talking about, um, commercializing you know, or whatever. commercializing, but also like, uh, having like an abstract element with a figurative element. I feel like that's, I feel like the artwork that I appreciate and enjoy the most has a, uh, I want to say, I feel like abstract art, you know, it, like a mixture of of kind of having like not necessarily even like painterly, but like a an ex, like an expressionistic or like an expressive side mixed somehow with a representational side. 
because after taking like a fair amount of like life drawing classes and which I think is a school a skill you can kind of lose if you stop doing it just like skateboarding you know and you really have to keep that muscle going which I, I did not continue that after um, I got out of school so I feel like um, you know that's something that's kind of like easy to lose if you don't keep doing it but I feel like the artwork a lot of the artwork that I like is somehow because I feel like when you're like portraying people either through portraiture or even just like anything where you're trying to draw something that's like real you know it either shows like that's a way you can show like either your training or practice or like your you know development or that like because I think that is a special skill you know to be able to you know draw a building or draw you know or to or to make a portrait that looks you know um like you know right on you know and uh because it's hard you know <laughs> um i feel like i always have this one memory of he's actually a good friend but we had to have this we had this assignment some sometime in college and the assignment was to do a self-portrait and I thought it was so funny because he turned in his, uh, like, portrait, but he had sunglasses on. And I was like, I mean, I don't want to say that he, like, ran out of time, you know, but it's like, well, I didn't want to paint, <laughs> I didn't want to paint the eyes, you yeah. know, so I just put some sunglasses on there, you know, and it's, because it is hard. I feel like, uh, you know, I, you know, to draw... People go into just such different fields. I uh, had this friend. She. That's what makes it fun. Yeah, I mean, there's so much, you know, just so much out there. It's. I had this one friend. She she went from um, our little school. Uh, she she transferred to Cleveland Institute of Art, and I, me, and another friend went to visit her there, and um, you know, it was. The Cleveland Institute of Art, I mean, it was the first time I'd been there and I haven't been back since, but uh, it was so different than like the little liberal arts setting that I was coming from that it was almost like an education just visiting a place like that, where it's kind of like, you know, nationally renowned, uh, you know, school for, for all different types of artists. And I just remember walking around that school and... Um, you know, just seeing, you know, undergrad, just ridiculous oil paintings, illustration. Um, one of the most striking thing was like the medical illustration department, which was like pretty small, but just seeing people like design like prosthetics and like, you know, it was, it was very different from like the, you know, it was like, well, this isn't just like, splattering paint around on something this is like you know people designing furniture like all this stuff uh i remember that when we went there uh the sculpture department had been commissioned by the cleveland zoo by duct tape the company to create like life-size and larger animals um out of like i don't know if they're using like foam but like basically we were like it was just like this brief pass through the sculpture department but remember we walked by like this tiger that like you know three or four or five people were working on on this platform i mean and it was huge it was bigger bigger than an actual tiger but like you know they were covering this you know probably like a time and a half to like two two times the size of this you know like what would i mean tigers are already like pretty big in the wild um but like this you know tiger like out of foam and covering it in duct tape but it like looked it didn't look like you know like actual yeah like actually real you know but had stripes and everything had stripes you know and just people being like i need more beige you know or like whatever and uh i don't know i hadn't thought about that in a long time too but it was you know there's a lot of different people doing a lot of different things out there which is really cool um that is kind of the intersection of like chaos yet something tangible to like that example the tiger the duct tape tiger it's like trashy but it's like a big big elegant creature and i think it's i mean you know it's kind of taking something as commonplace as duct tape 
and seeing how far you could maybe take it. Um, or like or like Elmer, Elmer's glue, right? Yeah, or Elmer's glue, which yeah. uh, we've been buying that by the gallon. Um, kind of just seeing how far you could take something. Um, I don't know. Art materials, I don't know. It's a, it's a trip, you know, because the expense of all of it. Um, I feel like that's why, I've, especially some of the stuff that I've held on to through all the years, you know, there's, it's like, I don't, I don't know what to totally do with all of it, you know, because I feel like that was, um, I mean, I still have a lot of my print, prints and everything from like undergrad. I mean, I graduated like, it's hard to believe like 17 years ago, but it's, I feel like that was, you know, I, I was in a very small art department, you know, my, my BFA group, I think there was like maybe like 15 or 20 of us in the group. And, um, you know, which is very different than like probably like a normal like SCAD commencement or whatever, you know. And uh, I don't know, just the, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm still kind of like on a shoestring budget to a degree, but I feel like back in the day, you know, especially it's like, it's like, all right, I gotta pay, I gotta buy like, I need like this paper for this edition. <laughs> and it's gonna be like, you know, $50 worth of paper. And that, I mean, that was just, that's just like a small example, you know, it's just the expense sometimes involved with, with different art mediums. And I mean, then it's, that's just like the tip of the iceberg. If you want to get into like framing or like sculptural things, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's insane. Um, um, tell me about strangers with acid. <laughs> um, Well, uh, the whole strangers with acid thing, um, I feel like part of what's kind of happened with me being like around here is, uh, like trying to like work. I don't want to, I don't know if it's like a brand, you know, or like creating something like that, but, um, I feel like that's been kind of like the loose net for like all of the the clothing and like, you know, I've been putting that on like some stickers and stuff like that. And, uh, I don't know. I mean the, uh, I feel like it's hopefully kind of like a provocative ish, uh, name for things. Um, it was going to be Tuesday night acid party, but, uh, you know, because candidly, I've had some uh, some good <laughs> and uh, bad experiences with LSD, and um, so it was kind of like this. I wanted to kind of conjure this. I don't know. I don't want to say darker. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like with the kind of like commercialization of some stuff, whether I mean, one of my primary loves is like music, so. You know, I don't want to say at some point, like, you got to, like, pick a band name, but, like, you got to, like, pick a name for, like, kind of, like, whatever you're doing to be, like, um... So people can... So people can, like, <laughs> people can recognize you. And, um, so I, I kind of just went with that, and, um... Has LSD, like, helped shape your work? Um, well, I mean, I haven't done LSD in a while, um, but, uh, I feel like, um... I feel like I had some weird, some good times, but some definitely some, some very like scary times too. Um, with that, when I was probably not respecting it for what it was, which is like a very, uh, you know, potentially like mind bending substance. And um, I don't know. I mean, I like the what? What's his name? Alex Gray. He does, uh, he does like these very like psychedelic, uh, paintings of people and I don't know. I, I feel like some people can, 
be, I don't want to say more creative under the influence of alcohol and drugs, but I don't feel like I'm that kind of person. I don't feel like, I don't feel like my, I don't think that necessarily that my work is stronger, you know. I think even, especially musicians like tend to end up using it as a crutch. Like they feel like they can't be creative without some sort of mind altering substance. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a different path for everybody. Um, I mean, I feel like I feel like a lot of creative people get into you know rec- either to recreational or more. It's kind of like to each their own. Um, but I feel like a lot, I feel like some people will eventually, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna get to like a not good place. And I feel like that's where it got for me because I've been sober, I guess about three and a half years now. So, um, and that's, and that's been a process, you know, it's, I'm like, I know it's <laughs> it's like the right thing for me now, but I I didn't. It's been a process, um, but I think. I mean, in like the recovery area of things, you know, a lot of people who have been. I feel like I don't really hear as much people in like either. You know, the visual arts. Um, being like you know sober or like in recovery I, I feel like some of them like my biggest like heroes and that kind of side of things have been musicians or actors who have gotten sober um you know just like a few small examples but like elton john you know like 30 plus years eric clapton uh even like slash from guns and roses i think he has like 15 years um people like jamie lee curtis um, Alec Baldwin, um, you know, just just so many. Most skateboarders, because for them it either goes too yeah. much Steve, or they have to get sober. Steve-O, um, Andy Roy, I think has been sober a little bit now. Um, I'm not sure if Bam Margera. He's struggling right now. Yeah, yeah. and I, I didn't know. Because uh, I feel, I mean, I feel like for me with all that, you know, it was like, you know, for a while it was just like a, kind of like a part of things, and the crazy thing is that even though kind of consequences increased as time went along, um, it wasn't really like a deterrent. Um, I think that's why addiction can be just so tragic, and um, you know, it's it's just a blessing, like. The way I was with my drinking, by the end of it, you know, it was just, you know, and coming out of the restaurant business where I was for a long time, you know, where it's very normalized, you know, it's, it had become so normalized over the years, you know, that it was like, I just, not even like I was really thinking about it. You're just, it was like every, you know, every new place I worked, you know, that was just kind of like it just came with the territory, you know? And I feel like that's, that comes with like a lot of people who are musicians too, you know? It's just a part of like that life, kind of like, I don't want to say like fringe life, but just, um, you know, you're just kind of like working an unusual job with unusual hours, um, cash involved, you know, like like there's literally like a bar at your workplace, you know? I kind of forgot that other people like, you know, like go to like an office or, you know, like they go, do you know they go teach or like whatever you know and like you know because i waited tables full time for like pretty much 15 years you know and was still kind of doing some of the creative stuff but never i feel like with, with that whole lifestyle for me i was never i was always just treading water with like the nightlife and like i mean when the years i lived in Asheville, i mean one of my favorite things about that was like I was just seeing so much music, you know, I could see like literally any band I wanted in a city that's much smaller than Savannah. Um, 
and I could just I lived right down the street from this club called the Orange Peel and I could literally see like you know groups that would fill normally like arenas or like whatever and just like this much much smaller um club and you know it was it was a good time but I feel like you know because I'm 39 um I feel like I was a little bit younger I could bounce back a little bit faster um but I feel like with my drinking you know, I don't. I don't want to say that I was a late stage alcoholic at 35, but um, you know, my drinking, like unless unless I was like, a, you know, asleep, like passed out in bed, whatever, or like at work, I was like drinking all the time. Like, if this was like right, you know, if this was like right now, like four years ago, um, I'm. It was like if I wasn't if I wasn't working, you know, I was always you know it just had become continuous and uh, everybody has their own path, you know. I think I feel like there's different layers of manageability, um, but I don't know what what I f- what I feel like I don't know if it catches up with everybody, but especially with like alcohol. You know the the you know it wasn't like I was actually like incurring like a lot of consequences like I've been arrested a couple times you know and but really like wasn't like that crazy and um but I feel like the very like physical side of alcoholism had was really catching up with me like the withdrawal because the way that I would drink which was I couldn't not drink and then once I started drinking I don't even think I really thought about it as not being able to stop. It's just like I was all—I was always headed toward that first drink, and once I started drinking, with very few exceptions, I was just continue. You know, it was—I was never like, well, let's just like have like a couple. I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, I've—I've I've talked about this some some recently too. You know, and I feel like. Um, I read somewhere, you know, it's like the greatest risk factor for uh, for alcoholism may be, you know, a ge- genetic predisposition, which is I've started to, like, look back in some of my family history. I feel like it's just not talked about a lot, too, like addiction and alcoholism. And, you know, it's just this strange area where it's kind of like on one side there's a lot of shame and, like, on the, another side there's a lot of, like, denial, you know, and it's just in a city like savannah where it's just you know it seems like it's just sold as this place you know if you want to come here and just like throw down i mean because i've I've literally waited on you know it's like yeah we're here for the bachelor bachelorette party you know like weddings and tourism and big part of the culture for big sure. part of the culture i mean i remember being surprised when we moved here from atlanta when i was in seventh grade and i feel like even then it was kind of like before I got into, you know, whatever I got into myself, you know, but it was like the whole thing with like St. Patrick's Day, you know, like they didn't do that in Atlanta, you know, it was kind of like, it's like, it seems like there's like a lot of like drinking here, you know. If you were talking to yourself right as you were graduating with your BFA, what advice would you give? Ooh, um, that's a good question. Um, uh, I mean, it was good experience for me. What I did when I immediately when I got out of college that summer and into the falls, I traveled a bunch, which I don't want to say don't do that because it was great. I made like two cross country trips from Savannah, um, you know, through driving and flying. I went from like Savannah all the way to like up through Boston and to the border of Canada. And then on another trip, basically drove from Savannah to Los Angeles and then flew back. But I don't know. So I think I feel like I what little capital kind of like from like graduation presents and stuff like that. I kind of just like splurged and (laughs) went on like these crazy trips, you know, which was amazing. I don't know. Just maybe just keep making stuff and, um, you know, see see where you can, you know, 
I guess just see kind of where th- where things take you. It's I guess it's different for everybody, but um, because I feel like and I feel like sometimes also I had to have a lot of those other weird jobs to get to be a little bit later now to be to kind of like make it more of a priority. I just feel like it's hard to. You know, there's just so many, there's just so many interesting things to do all the time, but especially I think when you're in like your, you know, younger 20s and, um, I don't know, get some, get something where you, where you could find like a practical side to thing, whether that's working for somebody who does like framing or something where find some sort of like art service, you know, um, where you can like almost learn like a trade, you know? Um, Something where you can enter into that commercial side of things because I feel like otherwise, you know, most people, you're gonna end up working in like a possibly, you know, very different setting, you know, like the restaurant business um, is great for fast cash, you know, and you can actually make, you know, bartending. I mean, it's very seductive, you know, um, you know, make a lot of money, but I feel like that's a that's a hard business to be in long term, even and maybe especially so if you own your own place. But um, I don't know to find some sort of a to service or I don't know. There's so many things. Get into working on movies or um, but don't delay too long, or else I feel like you know you could end up taking some jobs that you know maybe you weren't super into but just like the way of the world and like you know find yourself um but i feel like it you know even if that does happen it kind of like adds to you you know and adds to your experience of things you know so that's and that's valuable too you know just having a diversity of experiences um and just being like open-minded and positive and kind of just seeing what happens and don't be isolated and uh you know just meet people wherever you are and cultivate those connections and um the currency of relationships yeah the cur- the currency of relationships um <laughs> how can people learn more how can people see your see your work and uh, maybe place an order um well i mean i'm kill i'm still kind of like straddling that line between like ho- heavy hobby and professional um probably instagram nathan von finley that's uh that's the instagram um you can definitely come by here um the stables in the savannah. stables in savannah but uh instagram i stay in i stay in touch with a lot of people through instagram um, I've gotten a lot of orders. I've done a lot of, met a lot of people, you know, especially just being so isolated this past year and, and some points that, you know, it's, you know, it's basically just like, you know, texting on there is almost just like texting like a, you know, actual number. And so I've, uh, I've had a lot of, you know, usually pretty much I reserve, I mean, there's a couple pictures of my nephews, you know, and some family stuff, but I've tried to like, mainly reserve like my Instagram just for like creative stuff. So um, pretty much everything from the past year is on there. I try to post pretty frequently and then um, upstairs in the studio here is just a lot of that and other stuff. And it's always, that's a, that's a goal for the, for, you know, now and into the future is trying to like work on some of the, you know, polishing and marketing and, I mean, that's, that's, you know, I feel like the creative and creation part of it is like the, the natural and like the fun part, you know, but I feel like that's the part of the discipline, you know, like we already talked about is to, you know, to getting a website and getting your stuff out there and getting, you know, tightening all that up. And it's, I mean, I think it's, I think it's a process for most people. Um, But Ron, who works here, he's a glass blower here. He said that you know, turning all of this into a business, it took him about three years. And I was, so I always kind of kept that, that timetable in mind, you know, that it's, uh, 
you know, just to always just keep making stuff. And, you know, it's like, I feel, I feel like sometimes the, the, the change is so gradual, you know, but it's like, if you look back to like, you know, like what you were doing like a year ago or like a year before that. And then like, you know, the year before that. And it's just like, uh, what's the phrase, uh, compound interest, you know, and that just like, it's, uh, I mean, some people blow it up and, you know, it's just immediately make things happen. But I feel like that's not. Yeah, they're the outlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's not the most common, you know, experience. And just find things you enjoy making. I think that's a big part of it, too. You know, it's just make whatever you want. And, um, you know, it's I feel like with my messier like artwork, that's me like making whatever I want. And then the clothing stuff is more like directed you know people either like having an idea for something and then kind of in my style i'll like go into it but it's kind of like so kind of doing both and uh and hopefully they'll both reinforce each other after a while you know it's like the clothing and the artwork and it's just like a total you know and then who knows what'll happen after that you know it's uh hopefully i feel like at some point i read that there was one of the was there a renaissance after the plague years in Italy? Yeah, that, I think that sounds right. And, and I brought that up in another podcast. I think we're going, um, because we were artists, we're listed as very non-essential employees. I think that I think that in the upcoming years or decades, we're going to societally place more emphasis on artists and creative people. That's my belief. I think we could be headed toward that. I mean, I know people are hungry for concerts and just getting back out and, you know, into going to art openings and being connected with their communities. And, um, I mean, I feel like that's one thing I took for granted, you know, prior to all this happening was like, you know, just not engaging kind of in, uh, you know, just local goings on as much as I could have, you know, and it wasn't until a time like this, you know, that you kind of like after the fact, you're like, I need to, you know, never take that for granted and just, you know, meet the people where you're at and what do they say? Uh, bloom where you're planted, mm. you know, and just kind of just put yourself out there. Cool, man. Uh, well, in upcoming episodes of The Creative Truth, I'm going to be talking to more artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals to help discover their path to success. If you have episode feedback or guest suggestions, you can email me at wecreatetruth at gmail.com. And you can go online to creative-truth.com to learn more and buy some swag. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate your support. Follow Nate, Nathan, at Nathan underscore Vaughn underscore Finley. On Instagram, I'll drop that in the uh, in the description. Um, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I hope we can just do this all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'll be your <laughs> I'll be your neighbor upstairs. So, you know, so hopefully thanks. not burn this out. Yeah, for sure. Thank you.